Welcome to the Applicant Worksheets How-To video series presented by FEMA's Public Assistance Training Section. In this series of seven videos, we explain where and how to obtain FEMA Public Assistance Applicant Worksheets, as well as how to record information accurately on six specific worksheets. This is part four of the series. Here, we demonstrate how to fill in the Force Account Equipment Summary Record. The Force Account Equipment Summary Record provides information about the use of an applicant's Force Account Equipment in performing eligible work. The term Force Account Equipment refers to equipment owned by an applicant as opposed to equipment that is leased or borrowed. Let's take a look at the worksheet next. If you'd like, feel free to open the copy of this worksheet you downloaded in the first video and follow along there. Before we get started, there are several helpful hints to consider when filling out the Force Account Equipment Summary Record. We already downloaded the Force Account Equipment Summary Record in the first video. The FEMA Schedule of Equipment Rates is found much the same way. Next, you'll also create a separate list of equipment with equipment numbers. Then, you can compare that list to the FEMA Schedule of Equipment Rates. From there, fill in the Force Account Equipment Summary Record and create templates for future use. From the FEMA.gov homepage, click the Search icon. In the search box that pops up, type in the keyword Equipment and click Go. The FEMA.gov webpage will return a list of related pages based on your keyword search. In this case, we can scroll down to find the schedule of equipment rates. Click on this hyperlink. This will bring you to another FEMA webpage with more information about FEMA's equipment rate schedule. Scroll down and click on the latest schedule at the link provided. On the next page, find the most current version and click on the link. Save the PDF file to your local computer or network. This will allow you to access the file at any time. Once the download is complete, open the file. You'll see there are eight columns that we can use to narrow the equipment to the most appropriate cost code or rate for your equipment. These include characteristics such as specifications, capacity or size, and horsepower. The force account equipment is listed at the lowest cost for that type of equipment. For example, if you used a pickup truck for eligible work, you can search the equipment list for pickup. Right click on the file and choose Find, then type in your keyword. From here, you can narrow the results to the specific type of pickup that you have. For instance, if you drive a half-ton pickup truck with a 4x2 axle and 180 horsepower, you would choose the equipment rate 8801 with a rate of $12.78 per hour. If a piece of equipment has horsepower, your equipment should fall within the horsepower range listed. If it's above, go to the next higher cost code. Record this on your spreadsheet. Verify the units. Most units are hourly, but there are some that are mileage. Based on narrowing down your selection, record the appropriate cost code on your spreadsheet next to the equipment name along with the rate. Repeat these steps for each piece of equipment that you've used for eligible work. We will use this list to fill in the Force Account Equipment Summary Record. Okay, let's get started. The first part you will fill in on the Force Account Equipment Summary Record is the header information. In the Applicant box, put the name of your organization. The PAID, or Public Assistance Identification Number, is permanently assigned to your organization by the FEMA Public Assistance Program. It is available in FEMA's Grants Portal application or from your recipient or FEMA representative. The project number refers to the project for which you are requesting reimbursement. Use the one given to you by your FEMA representative. Or, if one is not available, use your own project number that corresponds to the work you performed. The next box is the FEMA disaster number under which you are requesting funding. Typically, this begins with the letters DR or EM followed by a hyphen, four digits, another hyphen, and a short abbreviation for your state or tribe. Next is the location or site. If this summary is for work at a specific site, enter the site name. If work was performed at multiple sites, enter all of the site names where work was performed in the time period you are reporting. 
The next box is Category. FEMA has seven broad categories, A through G, to describe public assistance work. If you are unsure of the category, refer to the Public Assistance Program and Policy Guide or consult with your recipient or FEMA representative. At this point, save this form as a template so that you have it available for future use. Later, when you are filling out this form for a specific project, you will fill in the period covering and the description of work performed. We'll leave those blank for now. The next section we'll fill in is the template body. From the separate equipment spreadsheet or list you created, fill in the force account equipment summary record with the equipment used to perform eligible work. Include the size, capacity, horsepower, make, and model as appropriate. Also include the equipment code number from the FEMA schedule of equipment rates. This is typically a four-digit number beginning with the number eight. Also from the FEMA schedule of equipment rates, include the equipment rate in the costs section. This should be entered as a dollar value. At this point, before you input specific dates and hours, you can save the Force Account Equipment Summary record as a template. You can then use this template to create project-specific files for other periods of work using the same equipment without having to re-enter the information each time. This works especially well if you have many different pieces or types of equipment or periods of work performance. Once you have created and saved your Force Account Equipment Summary Record templates, you can begin filling out these templates with project-specific information to capture your equipment use. Make sure to first save a project-specific version of the template and then begin. Also, don't forget that at this point we can fill in the period covering and the description of work performed back in the header section. The period covering should reflect the time period of work shown on the worksheet. This form is set up for a one-week period, normally corresponding to the pay week you created in the Force Account Summary record. The description of work performed should describe the work for which the equipment was used. Here, you should be brief but as specific as possible about the work completed during the period covered. Next, we will fill in the dates and the hours used each day for each piece of equipment. A helpful hint is to start the first day of this form so that it coincides with the same dates as the corresponding force account labor summary record. This will assist later when validating the labor hours against the equipment use. Once the dates are entered, fill in the operator's name column. For each piece of equipment, provide the name of the equipment operator using the last name, comma, first name format. If several employees are assigned to the same piece of equipment at one time, only record the most likely operator of the equipment. Do not mix operators for the same piece of equipment or days or hours. Next, record the number of hours each piece of equipment was used per operator. This should correspond to the same dates and hours shown on the force account labor summary record for the operator listed. If the same piece of equipment is used on different days by different operators, list that equipment by operator. Next, add all of the claimed hours of equipment use per the equipment record and show the total in the total hours column. Multiply the equipment rate by the total hours to obtain the total cost and record this as a dollar amount. Please note, if the total cost column is locked, you will need to print this form manually input the total cost, then resave the completed worksheet. At the bottom, in the grand total row, add all the equipment total costs together. Record this as a dollar amount. Make sure to double check your math. Finally, in the certified box, provide the name of the person certifying the form, along with their title in the title box, and the date certified in the date box. Also, be sure to include the page number at the top of the worksheet. Finally, save your project-specific file, making sure to give it a unique name. Do not save it using your template file name or it will be overwritten. Congratulations! You have successfully completed the Force Account Equipment Summary Record.
This is one of the public assistance documents you, as an applicant, will upload to FEMA using the Grants Portal application. To learn more about Grants Portal, FEMA offers other classes, webinars, and manuals. You can also contact the Grants Manager and Portal hotline at 866-337-8448 or email fema-recovery-pa-grants at fema.dhs.gov for additional support. Thank you for watching.